Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. Today we are going to uh, study about a new category of sensors or transducers which uh, are going to be used for measurement of pressure. Now in our previous video, uh, previous two videos we discussed about uh, force sensors. So in today's video we are going to discuss about a new category of sensor which is uh, used for measurement of pressure. So we are going to discuss about Borden tube element or Borden tube pressure gauge. So let us get started. So what is a Borden tube? A Borden tube is basically a mechanical transducer which is used for measurement of pressure at any point. It is a primary transducer. So whenever we say primary transducer it means that the output will always be in the form of displacement displacement of some movable end okay so obviously it's going to be used in conjunction with a secondary transducer okay so it is a primary transducer which means it converts change in pressure into mechanical displacement okay so this is the basic operating principle to convert pressure or differential pressure into linear or angular displacement. Normally the C type Borden tube element is used commonly which we are going to discuss today. Okay, The C type Borden tube pressure gauge. So the design of the C type Borden tube. The C type Borden tube is a thin wall tube of oval or flat sided cross section which is bent into a circular arc. The central angle ranges from 200 degree to 270 degree. Okay, This is the C type Borden tube. Okay, It is in the form of a C shaped structure okay, which is bent into a circular arc. Now this uh, tube is made of, of uh, plastic or elastic material or metallic alloy. Now the important thing to note here is that this end of the tube is fixed, it is rigid which is connected to the point where the pressure is to be measured. And this end of the tube which is elastic and sealed, it is free to move. This is the movable end which undergoes displacement whenever there is a change in the pressure or when pressure inside the tube and pressure outside the tube are different means there is a differential pressure okay now here let me magnify this image this is the initial coiling angle a this is the initial coiling angle before the tube undergoes any sort of displacement or deformation okay and when the tube undergoes displacement okay, from this position to this position because of a differential pressure the coiling angle is given by B. C is the difference between A and B. This is the displacement of the free end Y subscript O. This is the displacement of the free end of the Borden tube which is uh, which which is caused due to a pressure change a is the semi major axis of the tube and b is the semi minor axis okay okay so this is the general design or the construction of the c type borden tube element one end of the tube is fixed, the other uh, end of the tube is free to move. So whenever there is a change in the differential pressure, the free end of the tube undergoes movement which causes a displacement which is to be measured. Now this displacement is related with the initial coiling angle, the coiling angle which is caused when there is movement and the radius of the tube along with the differential pressure with the help of a mathematical expression. So 
the working of the Borden tube. So whenever there is a pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the tube, the cross section of the tube bends and it undergoes deformation as I said. Whenever there will be a change in the outside pressure with respect to the internal pressure, the outside pressure is given by P1 and the pressure inside the tube is given by P2, the tube will undergo deformation. It will try to straighten itself. As a result of that, this free end of the tube will undergo movement. Now, this movement of the free end causes some sort of a displacement which is given here by Y subscript O. This displacement is related with the initial coiling angle A, the angle of the tube whenever there is no displacement and the angle B at a certain movement or position of the free end. C is the difference between A and B. Okay. So, this causes the initial coiling angle to reduce from A to B. The difference between the two angles is given, given by C and the consequent displacement is given by Y subscript O and these all parameters are related to the pressure difference delta P which uh, we are going to discuss uh, in the upcoming slides. So, the net displacement that is Y subscript O this displacement can happen up to a maximum of 3 to 4 millimeters for a 10 centimeter tube diameter. Okay? And uh, the difference between the coiling angles A and B is uh, about 10 degrees and all this is for a 10 centimeter diameter C shaped bottom tube. And the maximum pressure which can be measured with this C shaped bottom tube is 35 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay? So, the mathematical expression for uh, the pressure difference and the coiling angles can which, uh, by which they can be related is given by C by A is equal to delta P into 1 minus mu square by E B T into R square into 1 minus B square by A square into alpha by beta. So, this is a uh, a complicated expression you can note it down. Now, the radial displacement of the tube is given by C by A into R into 1 minus cos A and the tangential displacement y tangential is given by C by A into R into A minus cos A. The total displacement is given by the square root of radial displacement plus the square root of tangential displacement root over. Now, coming to each and every values. Here, delta P is the pressure difference in Newton per meter square. R is the radius of the tube here. R is the radius of the tube. A is the initial coiling angle. As I said before, the angle when the tube had no displacement and B is the coiling angle when there is displacement of the free end of the tube, this is B, this is A, whenever there was no displacement. C is the difference between A and B. Okay? Then, mu is the Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio of uh, the C-shaped bottom tube is defined as the difference between the lateral strain and the longitudinal strain whenever the tube undergoes any sort of deformation. E is the Young's modulus of elasticity of the bottom tube material. A is the semi-major axis here, the semi-major axis and B is the semi-minor axis of the tube, okay? the bottom tube, the C-shaped bottom tube. Then we have T is the thickness of the walls of the tube and as far as alpha, beta and uh, X is concerned, they are dimensionless constants which depend on the bottom tube material and A, B and C are angles and radians. Okay? So, again let us understand the working of the bottom tube. This end of the tube, the C shaped bottom tube is fixed and is uh, kept on a rigid base which is connected to the source of pressure which is to be measured. Whenever there is a change in the pressure, when the outside pressure is different from the inside pressure of the tube, 
the tube undergoes deformation which causes displacement of the free end of the ball and tube leading to a displacement y subscript as a result of that this displacement can be related with the differential pressure that is the difference between the internal and the external pressure and the coiling angles b a and the difference between them c with the help of this expression okay the radial displacement is calculated the tangential displacement is calculated and the net displacement is calculated as per the given formula then how can uh, the bottom tube element be used along with a pointer scale arrangement now this is a basic uh, construction where the free end of the tube is connected to the pointer which is moves uh, which moves over a graduated or calibrated scale so whenever there is movement of this free end of the tube because of the pressure the input pressure the scale moves over the calibrated uh, the, the arrangement the pointer moves over the calibrated scale pointing to the desired pressure okay which is given on the scale another way in which it can be done is by connecting the free end of the tube with the core of a lvdt so in this case we are converting this motion or movement of the free end of the tube into a suitable voltage signal now we all have discussed lvdt in my previous video you can check it out in my channel okay so basically we are connecting the free end of the tube with the movable core of the lvdt so whenever there is displacement of the tube the core of the lvdt moves to and fro away from the null or reference position which produces a differential output voltage so by this way we can convert displacement of the tube into a suitable voltage signal so here we have discussed some of the basic concepts related to bottom tube pressure gauge and uh, along with the mathematical expression relating the various parameters now you can uh, you can note down the various expressions and uh, pause wherever you uh, want in the video to understand it in a better way so uh, so please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics and instrumentation engineering have a great day thank you very much